All right, everyone. The purpose of this video is just to demonstrate what the face mask looks like. Here it is on my face. It, um, it's a very simple device. It's just got a pad on the forehead, a pad on the chin, and it's got two hooks here to attach regular orthodontic elastics. And then those elastics attach to the hooks that are coming off of the MSE, the Maxillary Skeletal Expander, AKA the Juan Moon Appliance. And because the Juan Moon Appliance is screwed directly into the maxilla, it's got four screws that go right up into the, the back of the maxilla. Then this force that's coming through the face mask through the elastics is actually pulling on the maxilla itself rather than pulling on the teeth, uh, which means that there's potential for actual forward movement of the maxilla itself uh, without compromising the teeth, which is normally the risk with an ordinary face mask that's not used in conjunction with MSE is that it will uh, pull on the teeth and cause teeth to flare. It's never good in general in orthodontics to um, uh, use the teeth as handles when you could actually use the bone as handle, uh, which is what we're doing here in this case with the face mask. So let me just demonstrate for you. I'll Do some semicircles here. And then I also want to show you how to take it on and off. To take it off, you just unhook this elastic, and then you unhook this elastic, and there it is. That is the face mask. Probably. And then get the elastics out of your mouth so you don't choke on them. I would say this thing is probably worth five bucks. I mean, it's a piece of thin metal with two very basic pads with some soft fabric on the inside so that it's comfortable on the forehead and on the chin. And to put it on, you just take it. One elastic here. Second elastic. Here. And there she is. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is this angle. Notice that the angle that the bands are pulling is slightly upward. Okay, notice that it's definitely not downward. The angle that the elastics are pulling has to be slightly upward because uh, in an underdeveloped maxilla, such as most of us, or at least me, a maxilla is normally not just too small, but the angle of the maxilla is normally uh, wrong. So uh, a healthy maxilla is more flat and parallel to the ground, but an underdeveloped maxilla tends to be downward angled. So when we're pulling on the maxilla with the face mask, we want to make sure that we're applying counterclockwise tension to it to hopefully correct some of the um, clockwise rotation that we all have built into our maxillas. This is gonna upright the maxilla, it's gonna shorten the face and get us into a healthier position. Uh, for, so in, in double jaw surgery, when they cut the maxilla, they don't just move it forward, they actually cut it, move it forward and rotate it in this direction, which is the same direction that the elastics of the face mask are pulling on, uh, pulling in. The other thing I wanted to say is that you are not limited to just one elastic. You can have two elastics or even three. Any more than that, and it becomes quite uh, straining. So, you know, um, between one and three, I would say, depending on how ambitious you are and tolerant to uh, 
discomfort. So you can really push this, especially because, again, this MSC is not tooth-borne. Uh, I'm sorry, this face mask is not tooth-borne. It's bone-borne through the maxillary skeletal expander. The other thing is that you can wear this as much as you want. So uh, when Juan Moon was, my, orth my orthodontist told me that when Juan Moon was asked how much force should be applied through the face mask to the MSE, he replied as much as the patient can handle. So, you know, as many elastics as you can handle. And then again, in terms of duration, how much time you wear this, as much time as you can handle. So all day and all night is better. That's just more force being applied um, and more likelihood of results. Now you're gonna run into logistical issues with that. If you're out in public, like I am most of the time I'm on campus at school, then you know, you're not gonna be wearing this in public unless you're a maniac. I mean, this is a little aggressive, you know? Like having an MSC in and having crazy gaps between your teeth, you know, looking like that arcade game where you, you have the cannon and you, you launch the, the lacrosse balls at the clown's teeth and you knock his teeth out. That's what, that's what I kind of look like with the MSC, right? That's one thing when you approach people and you smile at them and they see your mouth looking like that and they see these metal hooks coming around the side. Okay, doable. Braces, doable. But this... No, not doable. So there's just going to be times when you can't wear this during the day. Now, what about at night? Well, let me tell you, when I wore this at night, when I attempted to wear it at night, I woke up with headaches. That doesn't mean that you're going to wake up with headaches if you wear this at night, because obviously night time is a great bang for your buck with this thing. No one is going to see you, and it's six to eight hours of prime time, you know, force being applied but I am very sensitive to headaches. I am a lifetime migraineur, uh, which means that I've been suffering with migraines for most of my life, at least since freshman year in high school in 2004. I started getting headaches. Any little thing sets me off. So just because I had headaches wearing this at night, or wearing this in general, I would say, that doesn't mean you're gonna have headaches. To conclude, um, so to, to recap that last point, yes, wearing this at night is probably your best bet, and you could probably get some crazy gains doing that. A word about proven results with MSC in adults. They don't really exist. So what kind of results can you expect with this? You gotta set your expectations pretty low, because even though the MSC has disrupted sutures throughout the cranium and kind of turned them from um, a firm frozen butter into a softer butter that allows this type of force to maybe pull the structures of the face forward. There's, there's really no good evidence that that's actually going to happen. Now, in theory, it should happen. And, and also, a lot of this adult orthodontic stuff is not really well-rooted in, in scientific study. That's way more true of AGA and ALF than it is true of MSC. MSC is quite well studied in, in terms of orthodontic, adult orthodontic expansion appliances, but still, this is um, experimental territory. Um, so set your expectations low and any type of sagittal, aka forward expansion that you can get with, MS, with MSC and face mask, I would be grateful for. To say a word, uh, about my own experience with the face mask before I sign off. I haven't worn this thing much, and actually, I'm not going to wear it much. And next week at my appointment with Dr. Uh, Zubad Nuaz at the Gelb Center, my orthodontist, the hooks are going to be removed um, so that a scan can be done to get my in, uh, clear aligners, my Invisalign, going to start straightening out my teeth. So you might be wondering, well, why am I quitting on the face mask? I mean, I just finished expanding the MSE to uh, my maximum, which is going to be 84 turns. So I, I maxed out my MSE last week, and this is prime time for me to be using face masks. So why am I not going to be um, going hard with face masks for the next month or two?
several reasons. Number one, it causes me headaches. This type of tension uh, is very uncomfortable for me and it has pretty consistently caused me to feel uh, a lot of um, headache-like symptoms which really disrupts my academic studies and my ability to be productive during the day because I end up just kind of nursing headache symptoms. Number two, my maxilla with relation to my mandible is already in a good position in terms of my maxilla is already in front of my mandible. My front teeth are already in front of my lower teeth when I bite. And so um, I don't really, so, so where is this going to lead? This, if I expand the upper without expanding the lower at this point, it's just going to lead to an overbite, which is what happened to me with aga. So this is definitely more appropriate for someone who has an underbite where the, the maxilla is behind the mandible, and then you can actually use the forward progression of the maxilla with respect to the lower teeth to determine whether or not results are being achieved. And in that case, the new position of the teeth as the maxilla comes forward, and I'm still talking about a patient with an, with an underbite, as the teeth come into that more healthy position, that's actually going to sustain the results of the face mask. So... I was, I was curious whether or not I was going to be, if my results with the face mask would be stable because, you know, I'm wearing it some of the time during the day and then I'm thinking, oh, well, as soon as I take it off, yeah, I'm, I'm doing work with my tongue to try to hold the maxilla forward, assuming I've gotten some results, but the, the tongue can only be so perfect, right? I mean, there's going to be times where the tongue is just lazy and mewing is imperfect, especially in my lifestyle when I'm so busy doing work, not able to do hard mewing focused mewing as much as you know I'd like and so I was just skeptical about the um, stability of results that I was having. Third, I'm going to be having a procedure called SFOT, Surgically Facilitated Orthodontic Therapy and this is a new kind of cutting-edge orthodontic treatment which uh, you, 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 you flay your gums open and you add uh, basically freeze-dried bone, and this allows you to, uh, so this basically thickens the alveolar bone, and that allows the orthodontist to move the teeth through the alveolar bone forward. So after my SFOT, Dr. Zabad Nuaz is going to uh, use clear aligners to actually expand my upper and my lower forward. So any forward expansion that I'm lacking after the MSE treatment, any forward expansion that I still want, he's going to attempt to achieve using SFOT and um, clear aligners. Now, I'm not doing SFOT just for sagittal expansion. I'm actually doing the SFOT because I need it, because uh, my prior orthodontic treatments, the Schwartz expander and the AGA, actually compromised my, my alveolar bone to the point where I'm Dr. Nuaz is not comfortable moving my teeth much uh, through that thin bone that I now have. So I'm doing the SFOT to, to bolster my, my, my compromised gums um, that resulted from past treatment so that he can finalize my, my occlusion using clear aligners. Uh, but a, an added bonus of SFOT is that it's going to allow us to expand through that new bone that the SFOT is going to lay down. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'd like to add on this before I sign off. Um, I will say it was very difficult for me to adjust this thing so that the appliance was pulling upward. Uh, I would say this is a very poorly designed face mask. Um, and I really had to uh, rig it in such a way that I really don't think I'm, I'm actually wearing it as designed. I think it's supposed to be flipped upside down, but I experimented with every possible position. And this is the only position of the pads with respect to this that actually results in it being held stably on my face and pulling in an upward direction. So uh, you, this comes with a little Allen key and all of these things can be adjusted. This, this, and this piece right here can all be loosened and adjusted. Um, so it took a lot of um, finagling for me to get that right. 
are there any other points I'd like to make? Because this, because again, this is going to be my last, my first and last face mask video because next week all of this stuff is being removed so that an intraoral scan for clear aligners can be made and then I will no longer have anchorage to the MSE. So I wanted to definitely demonstrate this before I remove it. I think that for people who with an underbite, this is a great option. I think that for anyone who's really super dedicated and probably has a much more private life than I do, this is a good option. Someone who's um, not headache sensitive, someone who can tolerate a ton of pain. Uh, I'm, no, I wouldn't even put it like that. Someone who, who um, constant pressure being applied to the face would not result in headaches for them because that's true for me, but it might not be true for most people. But yeah, this thing is pressing on the forehead, this is pressing on the chin, and that can be a little irritating and can and trigger headaches. So for me, that's a deal breaker, but for you, it might not be. So I support the use of face masks with MSE. I can tell you what I'm feeling right now is I'm feeling tension in all the right places. I'm feeling for a forward and upward pull throughout, throughout here, throughout here even. Um, it's, it works. It's not terribly uncomfortable. It's just that sustained use of it causes headaches for me. My maxilla is already pretty far forward with respect to my mandible. And I'm going to be having the SFOT, which is going to be giving me several millimeters of forward sagittal expansion. So, um, and, and also I'm on campus for several days a week during most of the day where wearing this is just not an option. So not an ideal treatment for me, but I recommend it for those of who, who may meet some of the criteria that I discussed in this video. And I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I hope uh, you enjoy seeing the face mask. It is real, it exists, it does work with the, with the MSC. I had never really been able to find it online. So I hope this video satisfies the curiosity of anyone wondering about face mask and MSC. All right, that's it for now. Peace out.